That is hay fertilizer. So what we're doing this week, our first cutting is done. We have a hay, a field that used to be a hay field that we are gonna mow. The reason why we're mowing it is because we worked it up about two years ago and then never did anything with it. There was some um, questionable stuff with the property that we didn't know what was gonna happen. Well, now we are farming it again. So the plan is to go out and mow it. It's gonna be rough, really rough and work it up again and then put in a nice hay seeding. So what we gotta do to prepare for that is since I know it's not gonna be smooth like a hay field, this hay bind has these shoes, that's what we call them, and it's just a depth guide. So all I'm doing is doing the equivalent. That's what you guys do if you adjusted your height on a lawnmower. So we're gonna move this, it's in the third hole now. We'll probably move it right up to the, well, we'll go one hole for now and see what that does when we're out there and then we may move it up to the last hole. But like I said, first cutting's done. So dad is going out. We just went and got that hay fertilizer today. We're gonna fertilize everything because um, it is definitely in need of it. We have not fertilized. Uh, I don't know, I can't remember the last time we fertilized hay. so. It's getting pretty light. All right, we're greased up. Everything's checked over. We'll head out as soon as Dad's out of the way. I am gonna run down to the gas station and grab a drink real quick, because I'm getting thirsty. Got it. Now we're gonna go out mowing. Here we are. This is the new seating that we made last year, and you guys saw that a little bit already. But uh, this is what we're working with goes down to where those trees are over it doesn't go all the way to the back and then up this and way and I get the locks off and we'll get to mowing here This is how it's going. Uh, luckily it's not in the rubber rolls, so that really doesn't make it much better. Got it nice and packed in there. I don't know how the heck it slugged so fast. I was literally looking forward, looked back, and it was like this. So I'm gonna be pulling all this grass out. All mowed up. It was thick. We will definitely be getting quite a few bales off of this. Probably enough to feed the cattle for the year. Right before I went out mowing, I was grinding feed with this and noticed a hydraulic leak. It wasn't bad, it was just a small drip, but I am going to get that fixed now. We don't need this tractor for a short period of time, so I am going to get it find which one of these two lines are leaking it's either this bigger metal one that goes to rubber here or that smaller metal one and they are leaking right at where they come to a touch there so i'll clean them up start the tractor up see which one's leaking get on the john deere parts portal find a part number for it and then call john deere in the morning because uh, it's past five o'clock now so they are not open I'm also noticing this um, negative line that it, and it's not a line, a negative cable that is looking pretty bad. It looks like it got up against something hot here and melted up, and then it doesn't look good there either. So I'm going to take that off and run and grab a new one of those in the morning. All 
All right, that confirms it. It is the little line. Um, not exactly sh quite sure where that goes, but it looks like I gotta take the battery out, take the battery box off, get down in there. It looks like it ends right down right there. So we'll see, and then it comes up here, loops it around, and I am really not sure how that goes right there. All right, That's here's the hole. scene of the crime. Got the lime laying right there. Uh, it ran from right here where this bolt's sticking out. I have a bolt wrapped in electrical tape in there because this is below the reservoir, so it was just letting all the oil out. It ran up along here, behind the clutch pedal, up through there, up through along in here, and all the way up to right there. So, um, it did not come out. I had to cut it to get it out. Reason being, is that big line won't come off. This one right here, it's got to come off because it's got to drop straight down and turn and then kind of finagle out that way. That line is in the way and it will not come off. I've been reefing on it down there for a while. I'm assuming that swivel is seized up. Um, it probably would have come off if I took it off here and then down there, but I think I would have to cut it anyway because there's not enough room to turn that all the way out. So that is going to stay. I'm gonna run to the local parts store tomorrow, see if we can do a rubber line with this. It's flared ends. I don't know if you can use an O-ring ends to, or not on those, but I'll find out tomorrow. If we can get a hose, this will come back together tomorrow. If not, I will have to order that line and that metal line through Deer, and um, that'll end up being probably a week, and then we'll be able to put it back together. Good morning, everybody. It's been a couple days. Got the parts I need for the 4020 here. Um, we're gonna do a rubber hose. I don't like doing rubber, but it's just what I'm gonna have to do since I can't get that big line off and I don't want to pay for another big line. Now, um, if you don't know, the metal lines, especially through deer, will run you pretty expensive. I would have guessed the one that I took off, meaning to replace, was gonna be around 100 to 125 bucks. That short one there, it's shorter, but it is bigger. I wouldn't be surprised if that one would run about the same or more, maybe about $150, $180. We got the hose though. I uh, got a 45 on one end and a straight fitting on the other. So we'll put the 45 down there and put the straight in there. All right, here we go. The hose is on up here. So I have just this one to put on down here. I got this hose made a little extra long than I needed to just so that I knew I would be able to do this. So we'll twist her around, get her to start on that. I gotta pull this bolt out. Now this is below the hydraulic reservoir. So I'm gonna have oil pouring out of here as I am trying to put this line on. So I'm gonna have the camera rolling and see how bad this can really go. I got free rain there. I'm gonna come in just like that. And then we'll try and manage the rest of the line sticking out here shortly. Oh, now there isn't any oil. Oil was pouring out of here non-stop yesterday. All right. That's the case. I'm going to take... I'm going to come in just like this. That might work. I think I got it figured out. So if anybody else wants to know how to route the hose, it just droops around in there, comes up through there, and the 45 works perfectly over there. And I'll show you with the battery box on. Set it in. Somebody else's might be a little different. It looks like somebody refabbed these um, battery box latch, uh, hinges, but there, and right there. Right 
now that the 4020 is done, we're gonna move on to this tire. Uh, it's got a bad spot in it somewhere on the tube. Dad was hauling fertilizer on the hay and was on his last field a couple miles south of here and it started going flat and it was flat by the time he finished. So um, he had to leave the tractor down there. We're gonna get this fixed and get it back down there and get it back on the tractor and bring the tractor home. Here's the tube we're dealing with. It was a old patch that failed. I was trying to peel it off and just do a repatch, but I ended up tearing the tube pretty bad. So I am going to go uptown, grab the tube. And here it is, we got the wheel on. Uh, but the, this tractor has developed a bad battery, so we gotta jump start it. Try it. You guys are not going to believe what happened. You saw we had to jump start this. That's the second time in the last week, twice in a row. I wanted to check the batteries over. If you don't know how these work, they're 6 volts in a series, so they make 12 volts. Supposedly get more cranking amps or something like that that way, so... The batteries seem okay. I may pull this side because this side looks older and it was a little weaker, but I don't know. Um, one thing I wanted to do is I wanted to crack this injector line. Reason being is this one keeps blowing an O-ring on the injector and it just leaks fuel down this. Um, I finally just quit putting O-rings in it because it wasn't worth my time taking it all apart to put an O-ring in, start it up, and within 15 minutes it blew the O-ring again. My hunch is that that is a dead cylinder now it doesn't run like it's a dead cylinder but that's just my thoughts so i was trying to get that off and me and dad were standing here and all of a sudden we hear this hissing sound and this tire blows out again just sitting here in the shop so we have a jack stand under it wood block we're gonna pull this wheel off here now take it out see if i missed something stuck in the tire i mean i didn't look super hard at the tire because i saw it being an old patch that was blown out so i didn't expect there to really be anything stuck in the tire so we're gonna pull that out again and see what we get again if anybody else has any ideas on what's wrong with this thing uh leaking that injector um this isn't the original engine this is a 466 out of a 7720 combine so it's not meant to be in this tractor, but it works just fine in here. Okay, so I don't know what happened here, but the valve stem went out, it went bad right on the seal there. It's a brand new tube. And that happened between, with about three miles of drive, two and a half maybe. So I immediately went to the rim, checked the rim out, you know it's not, a uh, new rim by any means, but there is nothing there to cause it to have problems. So I've wire brushed it up a little bit, trying to smooth some of these little bits out, but that would not have done that, I don't think. I'm going to take that tube back to where I bought it and see if there's anything they can do for me. Show them a picture of the size. This is an 11.00-16SL. And this is an 11R1516 tube. I thought that was the right one. Maybe I got the wrong one. We'll see. But anyway. I gotta get all this straightened out. And hopefully we can get this tractor out of the shop still tonight. But. Got a new tube sitting here. They replaced it. Uh, no charge. So I still, just for good measure, went through and cleaned all this up with the grinder. And then wire brushed it down to where it's all nice and smooth just in case there was something weird right there that just did it on the first tube or on the second tube i mean tires on it's up right now and it ain't hissing so we'll call that a win for today 
It may be a loss for tomorrow, but at least it's a win for today. Um, if it does start, I'm going to test the batteries every time we shut it down until I can uh, rule out one of the batteries, because I'm sure both of them aren't bad, but one might be. And um, it may just be up still because of the jump start, and we probably didn't drive it far enough for it to draw enough to really see which battery is low. So over time, should be able to find that, and I'll get that repaired and ready for that tractor's got to go on the cultivator here soon if we get some rain. Um, but until then, thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.